Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a 10th grade topic, solving similar triangles. Now, if you're new to my channel, I put time goes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what you see today or even your own homework, you can always put it in the comment box below or visit me on my Facebook page at Tutumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. Today's video is going to have two questions. So leave a like, smash the subscribe, and let's get started. In my previous video, we talked about what makes two triangles similar. Now we want to take everything that we learned and find missing sides. We want to solve similar triangles. So for our first question, we have two similar triangles. The first thing we want to do here is identify what two triangles we're working with. So we have a big triangle, this huge triangle, and then we have a smaller triangle within it. So we have triangle, and it's going to be the big one first. So L K M, L K. M. And we have triangle, the smaller one now, triangle BKC, BKC, and we said that they're similar. But how do we know that these two triangles are similar beyond me telling you they're similar? Remember, two triangles are going to be similar when all corresponding angles from one triangle equals all corresponding angles from the other triangle. So let's do a quick glance to make sure we have that happening here. Now it may look like this is a right triangle, but it is not. I have not drawn any boxes, so these are going to be different from 90 degree angles down here. So don't just look at this and assume that these two are going to be equal based on the 90 degree right angle. But there is something we can easily tell, and that is both triangles have that K there. That means they both share this angle. So that's one angle down one angle down that is shared by both. If they're shared by both, they must be equal in both triangles. Now all that's left is to find the other two and make sure they're also congruent. So let's look at this angle B. This angle B here is supposed to be congruent to that angle there. But how do we know that's true? Well, this is gonna tie back into what we know about corresponding angles. Whenever we have parallel lines that's intersected by a third line we call the transversal, the corresponding angles, which these are, are going to be congruent. So we know that this is going to be congruent to that. Likewise, you can say the same thing for this line down here. We have, once again, parallel lines, and this is going to be a transversal that intersects both of these lines, creating corresponding angles, which are also going to be congruent. So we have all three angles now, congruent from one triangle to the other. Thus, we know we have similar triangles. So that's just a quick recap on what makes similar triangles, but we want to go a step further. We have an X here, a missing side, and we want to take what we know about similar triangles to find this X. Now, there's a special property about similar triangles regarding their sides that we can take advantage of, and that is the corresponding sides of one similar triangle is going to be in proportion to the corresponding sides from the other similar triangle. And because of that, we have a nice little equation we can write. However, before we write the equation, we have to identify what are the corresponding sides. Luckily for this type of example, it's going to be fairly simple to identify what those sides are going to be. This side right here, this missing X, is going to be a smaller cutoff portion of the whole side KM. So KC is going to be corresponding to the longer side KM. So we can write KC over KM. Likewise, KB is going to be a smaller portion of the longer side KL. So we know that KB is going to be corresponding to KL. Now we're left with these two sides here. Now these might not be as obvious as the other two sides because they're not lying on top of each other. But because you found the other two sides, you know that these have to be corresponding sides. So that means that BC is going to be corresponding to LM. So let's recap real quick before moving on. The first thing you have to do when you have something like this is identify what your two triangles are. Hence this first thing here. You have to know what your two triangles are so you can then pick out their corresponding sides. 
you picked out the corresponding sides and you can rewrite that equation in this fashion. Now that's assuming they already told you you have similar triangles. If they don't give you that they're similar and you have to find that out yourself, remember, you can just make sure that all the corresponding angles are gonna be congruent to each other. But if you're given that these are similar triangles, you don't have to worry about that step. So now that we have our corresponding sides and our equation, we can now pick the ones that are gonna help us find our missing side. So you see, we don't know what this KC is, so we have to have the KC portion of this down here. And we can replace KC with an X because we don't know what X is. However, we know what KM is, right? We have this thing here. KM is gonna be 121. And because these ratios are all equal to one another, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. So let's choose this KB over KL. KB is going to be 65, and KL is going to be what? Well, KL is this whole big side here. So that's 143. Now you can simply cross multiply or just multiply both sides by 121 to get X by itself. If you do the cross multiplication, you have to do an extra step anyway, so you might as well just multiply both sides by 121 to get X is going to be equal to 121 times 65 over 143. You can plug that into your calculator to get that X is going to be 55. So we know that X is 55 now. But in math, it's always great to check your work. So what I would recommend is if you have the time, let's say this is on a test or something, come back to this and use your other part. So instead of this 65 over 143, I want you to use BC over LM. Now BC is 40 and LM is 88. And we want to see, do we still get this 55 here? Now X is going to be slightly different because it's now 121 times 40 over 88. Now when you plug this into your calculator, do you still get X equals 55? You do. So we know that because this X over 21, we found 55 both ways, we can be sure that 55 is indeed our answer. Let's move on to our second question. For our second question, we have these two triangles here. And I'm letting you know now, these two triangles are indeed similar. That means you don't necessarily have to try to prove the similar, and we can move on to what we really need to find out, and that's our missing side A. As you can see, we're given quite a bit of information, but we need to find that missing side. And remember, the first thing we wanna do is identify what our two triangles are. They're pretty obvious here, unlike our previous example, which we had kind of one inside the other, so you can kind of have like an optical illusion kind of thing here. These are pretty standard. These triangles are touching right here, and they're quite separate. However, writing down our little similar side thing here is going to prove a little difficult because we need to know which sides are gonna correspond with each other first. And that's only because this really does matter how you write it. So let's actually move on to finding the corresponding sides and then we'll come back to writing our two triangles. Now finding the corresponding sides for this problem is probably gonna prove a little bit more difficult than finding the corresponding sides to the previous problem and that's okay. We can still do this by taking into account what we know about vertical angles, what we know about transversals, what we know about parallel lines and even alternate angles. If we take all that knowledge from previous videos that we discussed and apply it to this problem, we can easily figure out what our corresponding sides are. Now, if you have any questions about any of those topics, I have a lot of videos that you can find up here that will help break down each and every one of them. However, the first one that we can see very easily is this vertical angle here. These angles are vertical angles Thus, we know that they're going to be congruent. And because these are vertical angles and congruent, they're going to be corresponding with one another. Now, you may be asking, why are we still focused on angles if we already know that these two triangles are similar? And that's because we can find our corresponding sides if we know what the corresponding angles are. If you recall in my previous video on similar triangles, I said that your corresponding sides are always going to be opposite your corresponding angles. So since these are corresponding angles, we know that the sides opposite of them are going to be corresponding sides, which means that U, Y is going to be corresponding with W, X. So now that we have one, let's move on to the next. So if you zoom out of this structure a little bit, you see that we have parallel lines on the exterior here. 
these two lines are going to be parallel to each other. But not only that, you notice that we have lines that are intersecting them. These are going to be our transversals, which are going to be creating our alternate angles. And what do we know about transversals that intersect parallel lines? Well, they create alternate angles that are congruent with one another, right? So we know that these are congruent, and we know that these are congruent. Likewise, this transversal is going to create an alternate angle with this one, and they are going to be congruent. So now that we have our corresponding angles, we can find our corresponding sides. So this UV is going to be opposite this Y, and this Y is going to be corresponding with this angle W here. What side is opposite this angle W? That's going to be this VX here. So we know that UV is going to be corresponding to VX. Likewise, this YV is going to be opposite this U here. And this U is going to be corresponding to this X here. Now what's opposite X? This VW. So this YV is going to be corresponding with this VW. And we know that all of these equal. So now that we found our corresponding sides, we can actually rewrite our triangle in this fashion. Triangle YUV is going to be similar to triangle. Now Y is the one that starts this triangle and it corresponds with W. So W X V. It's important that the corresponding angles are going to be in the same order. So now we have our corresponding sides and we made our equation. Let's plug and chug to see what we get. We need to find our A. So we need to make that our focus point. This YV. So YV is going to be A. And we know that VW is going to be 50. And that's going to equal, well, it doesn't really matter which one we pick, but we have to make sure that it also has both parts available. Notice that VX is not given to us, so we probably should not pick that one, which leaves UY, which we know to be 27, and WX, which we know to be 45. If you cross multiply and do all your, your fun math, you can get A by itself to be 50 times 27 over 45. You plug all of that in and you get A is going to equal 30. So our missing side is going to be 30. So I know this was a little bit more complicated than our previous example, but it's important that you don't get overwhelmed with what you saw here today. Make sure you're taking it step by step. Identify your triangles. See which ones you're looking at. Then try to find your corresponding size, but don't forget what you've learned in previous grades. If any of that is fuzzy, it's going to make this process a lot harder. So I hope you have following today's examples, but if any part of that confused you, I recommend you make sure you watch it as many times as you need, going step by step to make sure that you understand everything we did, especially that second example. It was a little bit more difficult than the first one, but I know that with enough practice, you can get it. However, if you still have any questions, you can always put in the comment box below or visit me on my Facebook page at Tutumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. If you haven't done so already, remember to leave that like. It really helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found this video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I'm really hoping it's helped with your homework, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this is another session of Tutu Me Senpai.